Well, I want to talk about, um, we'll start here in a couple of minutes, but I'll, I'll begin a little bit with, with, uh, with an introduction, so to speak, and some, some concepts. Um, you know, this, this idea of mental health, we'll, use, we'll talk about some definitions in a moment and uh, so, that, so that we all understand, right? Um, that's what language is used for. Language is used to communicate concepts, okay? Words are used to communicate concepts. That's the purpose of it. Uh, the, uh, and so when we do these things, it's important, it's why we have definitions so that we can understand what we're saying, right? It's why we, we use the same language. And sometimes when we don't use the same language or we don't use words that so we all understand mean the same thing, it, we can have difficulty communicating. When we have a chance now, we're gonna talk about uh, mental health. I wanna talk a little bit about definition and <clears throat> so that we understand what we're talking about and, um, and then we can move forward from there. So let's have a prayer. I'm gonna go ahead and lead us in prayer and then we'll talk a little bit about this. We'll spend about a couple of weeks talking about this. All right, let's pray. Our Father in heaven, we're so grateful that we can approach your throne of grace every single day. And Father, you never tire from hearing from us. And uh, Father, for that, we're grateful. We, we, we're never bugging you. We're never, we're, we're never irritating you. And as a matter of fact, you long to hear from us. And Father, I pray that even sometimes when we come before you and we're not all that we need to be, we're thankful that you're so gracious and you're so full of mercy and you're so full of love and you're so accepting. Help us, Father, to learn from you not only the way that we need to treat uh, each other, even for sometimes for us to treat ourselves. Above all, Father, we're grateful for Jesus, who is the ultimate example in every area of our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, so I want to talk about this idea of, of mental health. But let's, let, let's define it a little bit. It is, uh, before I even go there, it is without a doubt, um, we understand we have different dynamics. There are certain aspects to us. One, we understand we're a physical body. That, there's no denying that. And so when there's some issues with our physical bodies, we do different things to be able to deal with it. There are times that we have to uh, feed it. There are times we have to rest it. There are times we have to work out. There are different dynamics that we have with our physical body. There's no denying that. Uh, we, we understand for sure that there's a spiritual aspect to us. As a matter of fact, human beings, we have been defined as we're spiritual beings with a physical aspect. Okay, we, we who are spiritual beings, we who are disciples, understand that, that uh, it is just as real our spiritual nature as our physical nature. Uh, we talk about, you know, our emotional nature. We talk about our mental nature. Uh, we talk about our intellectual nature. Um, in the recent past, incredibly positively, we're realizing there's health that we need to have in regard to our mental state. So let's, let's define some things here for a second. When I say mental health, mental health and mental illness are not the same things. Similarly, when you talk about someone's physical health and physical illness, that's a clear example that that's not the same thing. Um, and uh, even sometimes we get confused with emotional health relative to mental health, okay? When we have mental illness, it's when we have perhaps uh, bipolar, some schizophrenia, some, uh, uh, some depression, and so on and so forth. Um, so, so, so let's define that. So, uh, let's not use those words interchangeably. It's important for us to understand that. What's the difference between emotional health and mental health? But for our purposes, we're going to define them as this. Uh, mental health 
is is the is the way we think it's the it's the information that we get and uh, the way we think emotional health it's the way that we process the things that we think in other words the way we express ourselves because of what we think and so emotional health is expressing emo uh, 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 mental health is about thinking and the way we think in our lives and so so th that's the idea uh, and it might take a little bit uh, uh, to get used to it but we want to talk about this aspect now I am not a proponent where Christianity it's about pop psychology not at all and as a matter of fact um, I am I am very much against that I think however to fig to, for us to ignore a dynamic to our to ourselves and, and not really understand how it functions would be doing a disservice we can't deny the fact that we're physical beings we can't deny the fact that we need rest we can't deny the fact that we need food we can't deny the fact that if we're not doing well uh, i'm diabetic that i have to take care of myself if i if i hurt myself i have to put a band-aid on it i can't just simply deny it if i hurt myself badly i need to go to the hospital and so someone who is uh, uh equipped to be able to help me no one has a problem doing that however in our society we can have a stigma towards mental health we can have a stigma that says you know what what's wrong with you and if we can actually understand that this is part of who we are and the dynamic of who we are we can better be able to deal with ourselves and help ourselves especially as disciples and how we function in this moment um, you know uh, there are of course you can look at many articles and many definitions and but they all really honestly um, have the same disposition they have the same understanding and our approach towards our mental health and um, our ability to direct our mental energy in a positive direction can help us in our mental and emotional health you know it tells us you know i i, I need to read this thing psychology today uh, which is a magazine identifies the ability to counteract the demoralized feeling that could develop when something don't go our way or to find value and meaning in the face of trauma or loss or characteristics of emotion our characteristics of emotionally healthy people in other words our ability to find positive things when there are major challenges that come our way when there's a sickness and in other words for us to have a kind of mental attitude and i'll talk about how it's not always one side as opposed to the other for a second but um when we're emotionally healthy our ability to to, to find positive and do positive things in spite of challenges and honestly one of those things is is the challenge that we have with this pandemic is how do we find to ourselves coping to do things that are positive um, in this state now having said that that our ability to make what we will term lemonade out of lemon is that we can't have on the other side the the, the pollyanna where everything is always great and we're not able uh, to to process some things that are going through in our lives. In other words, it, almost living in denial, um, us looking for something to be happy or glad about when something happens to us may not be what we 
need all the time. For example, uh, the scripture talks about the idea that there's a time for everything. There is a time to mourn. There is a time to weep. There is a time to laugh. There is a time to cry. There is a time to celebrate. And so the idea is there are times to do things. For example, if someone's spouse or child or parent if that they're close to or someone that they're close to and, and they die and someone does not mourn and process that, there may be a disconnect. And so the idea is not that we always entirely in every situation find something to be happy about, but the idea is overall that we have some dispositions that are like that. And so, and so this idea of emotional health and mental health uh, is a very, very, very important dynamic to our makeup. You know, um, the, the, the idea of, um, of dealing with stress, you know, I, I think it's really important for us uh, uh, to understand stress is unavoidable. The issue is, how do we handle stress? And you see people who handle stress in many different ways because of situations that come their way and their ability to deal with what has come their way often helps them to have either an emotionally healthy state because they have a mental healthy state or they have an emotional weakness and sickness because they're not thinking right. And we see this, how do we see this? Sometimes when there's some trauma in someone's life and they are not able to handle it, and we'll talk about how to handle some of these things in a, in a moment. But when you're not able, I'm just trying to, to elevate and help us to understand how this often works. And, and so some people, the way they deal with some of these traumas, some of these stress in their life, they resort to drinking, to dull the pain. And to dull the pain so much that they get drunk or they resort to drugs, something that take them to a point that dulls the pain. Some will be resort to other things, uh, unhealthy sexual relationships, or immersing themselves in something where they're so lost from reality to the point where people destroy themselves. Or you have some people, that's the negative side of it, you have some people who are able to deal with themselves. And now, uh, uh, there are many companies that understand the positive aspect of being mentally healthy, which results in you being emotionally healthy. For example, there are companies that uh, have EAP, employment assistance programs, where where when these things happen. As a matter of fact, there are studies upon studies upon studies upon studies that shows whenever there is a, a, a mental wellness program or just simply a wellness program within a company, productivity rises. There's studies that has been done in regard to this, that uh, there's, there's a company called Blue Apple that when they had a wellness program instituted, 26% increase in sleep quality in people. That there was a 19% increase, increase in concentration, 16% increase in mood, 16% increase in decrease in food cravings, and overall 10% increase in employment stress resilience. In other words, the ability to understand stress. So, we need to think about it like this. 
you know, actually we need to think about life like this. We're all, everything is part of, of each other. We're all connected. Um, our body, we've used this analogy before, or the church is like a body. There's an arm, there's a leg, there's a stomach, there's a head, and it's all connected. If we only focus on one area, it is really, really weird. We can use this illustration. If someone works out only one arm, the one arm looks really big and the other side looks really uh, uh, scrawny and it doesn't even look good, much less it's not even healthy. Similarly, if we only take care of certain aspects of ourselves, then we're not taking care of the whole self. And so what's my point here for the first few minutes that I talked about? The point is this, that we must be aware of the need to be mentally healthy with results in us being emotionally healthy. And our ability to handle stress, the stress will come. So there's a couple things that we want to do with stress. We want to be able to handle stress and we want to be able to reduce stress. Whether or not we'll be able to avoid stress completely, that's living in a different world altogether. And so the idea here that I wanted to use this morning for is to talk about the idea that without a doubt, the mental health that we have, which results in our emotional health, remember, mental health is is what we think emotional health is how we express what we think and our ability to express and if we're not thinking right then we wouldn't be expressing the right thoughts when we're not thinking right if we have the wrong thoughts our emotional health will result in an unhealthy manner because we're not thinking right. And so that's the idea here, is that we think, we think right. So let's talk about this. Um, what constitutes good mental health? How do we, what does it look like? Okay, and, and um, I'll send this to us in a, in a, um, in an email, they had 10 attributes that, that um, and I'll read one from the US, uh, uh, general consensus meaning, uh, uh, and the Canadian uh, mental health. And they're generally the same. It says this, uh, there are 10 characteristics of people who are mentally healthy. They feel good about themselves. They do not become overwhelmed by emotions such as fear, anger, love, jealousy, guilt, or anxiety. They have lasting and satisfying personal relationships. They feel comfortable with other people. They can laugh at themselves and with others. They have respect for themselves and for others, even if there are differences. They're able to accept life's disappointments. They can meet life's demands and can handle their problems when they arise. They make their own decisions and they shape their environment whenever possible and adjust to it when necessary. That's from the US uh, vantage point, uh, meaning their, their summary of it. Um, uh, here's, here's another one that's a little more, a little shorter, but covers all of those. It says this, good mental health includes a sense of purpose. And so we'll, we'll use some of these as a guide uh, as we talk about our relationships and how our spiritual relationship ultimately can affect us. That good mental health includes, like I said, a sense of purpose, strong relationships, feeling connected to others, having a good sense of self, coping with stress, and enjoying life. A sense of purpose. You know, when we understand, that's why having a great, spiritual foundation is so incredibly important. Because 
when we have a good spiritual foundation, we understand that we have been sent to this earth for a purpose. That there is a destiny that lies in our calling. In the book of Ephesians, it tells us that we are saved by grace to do good works. I mean, that's, that's quite a remarkable statement. If you, if you have a chance there, you don't have necessarily have to turn, but I'll read it for you, and, and, and it helps, it'll help us to understand. You know, it was interesting to note that when Jesus called, calls the disciples, the first disciples, he did not say, come, follow me, and I will give you eternal life that there is a mentality that Jesus had when he shared his calling. And he says, uh, he says, come follow me, you know, and I am going to give you a purpose in your life. Now, someone with mental health doesn't necessarily need to have that purpose. I'm talking even outside of Christianity. But if you, that, that having a sense of purpose is so healthy, understanding why you're here is just an important part in moving forward. This is what it says. Uh, that scripture that I mentioned to you. It says, For it is by grace you have been saved through faith, and this not from yourselves, it is the gift of God. Not by works, so that no one can boast. For we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. The purpose to which God has called you and I is to do something, to have a sense of purpose. There are companies now, and the successful ones are the ones that actually talks about why, they're, why they exist. They have vision and mission statements. And if they can't define why they exist, and if it's and the more noble the purpose, the more the company survives and even the more successful it is. Uh, as a matter of fact, there are some people who even try to falsify their, their purpose simply to give it meaning. And that's, I'm not here to debate what companies those are. I'm just here to make the point that they understand without a doubt, if you have a sense of purpose, that that is a good thing. And the question that Christians ask themselves, if they don't have and understand purpose about why they're living and they're just living by happenstance. And so the idea is that we get up in the morning with a thought that I have a purpose about me, that God created me for good works. Some of that treasure hunt in our life, maybe, what specifically is that? We know sometimes categorically what that is, but what specifically that is. And so the idea is that I want to encourage you to think about why are you here? No. Now, why human beings are here, why is Tony Singh here in Ottawa? Why is Melanie Singh here in Ottawa? It's got to have a sense of purpose, often beyond ourselves. The more meaningful that purpose, the more health you have and therefore you're able to express yourself because of what you think we'll talk about the stress factor we'll talk about other factors to deal with this but this morning i just wanted to elevate the idea that taking care of ourselves mentally our mental health which ultimately leads into the way we have emotional health and the way that we express ourselves is an important dynamic, especially 
in this time of the coronavirus. I've seen it. I've seen the way if we're not able to maintain our mental health, we are going to fight. We're going to argue. We're going to rip it to each other because we're not having a good mental health. A good movie that I've watched in the past is a movie called, at least that expresses this thing, that, that when um, the devil came into town, it's a movie called Needful Things, and he came into town and he basically gave everybody that he wanted but he set people up against each other and they started to destroy each other and they destroyed the entire town because simply they were hurting each other. That's the essence of it. The truth is when we're not able to process things and to think about things, even within our own household, we can start to lash out at each other. And one of the ways to avoid that is for us to understand mentally, what is our purpose here? What are we trying to do? Successful companies understand this incredibly. Successful people understand this remarkably. And when I have to measure success, I'm talking about mental health that leads to emotional health. And so, that's where we're going to begin, and we're going to spend the next couple of weeks expounding on this and look at it through biblical eyes and to see if we have actually a great spiritual foundation, it will help us to have a great mental and emotional state. They are not different parts of the body. They are not different bodies. They may be different parts of the body, but if they function together cohesively, we can overall, spiritually, emotionally, mentally, intellectually, physically, function at a very, very high level. And you're going to see how having a relationship with God and the beauty of the scriptures and how it elevates our mentality, it elevates who we are because of the incredible wisdom of God and it being found in God's word. So that's a taste of what we're going to talk about. The idea, think about this. Think about your purpose. Think about why you are here. Amen? Awesome. Let's go ahead and close with a word of prayer. It's 830. I know today we spent uh, quite a bit de defining, talking about this, but we'll go straight into it the next few uh, uh, times we get together. So let's pray. Amen. And, we, and next time, by the way, we want to have a discussion on some of this. And so, uh, and so if you can think about even sisters, if you guys get together tomorrow and, the, and everyone on Wednesday, let's talk a little bit about this and tell me what you think and, and, and what you're feeling as we, as we uh, find a way towards great mental health. Let's pray. Father, we're just grateful for you. We're grateful that you uh, set us up so that we can understand ourselves and help each other better. Uh, thank you for your word. Thank you that is so insightful. And we're gonna look at examples of where people who has a great sense of purpose in the scriptures, how incredibly stable and healthy and emotional and spiritual and even physical they were because of their relationship ultimately with you. Thank you for Jesus. Thank you for the way he's called us. Thank you for calling us with a deep, deep sense of purpose and help us to find specifically what that purpose is in our lives. Help us to live a life filled with purpose. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <music>